terrible explosion tore open the skies above northern Kalimdor. At that moment, the great ship Exodar plummeted from the heavens and crashed upon the world of Azeroth. Having fled the ravaged world of Outland, the noble Dranai used the dimension traveling Exodar to reach safe haven. Inspired by tales of the heroic alliance that stood against the might of the Burning Legion, the Dranai have come to enlist aid in retaking their shattered homeland. Dedicated to preserving life and upholding the tenets of the Holy Light, the Dranai hope to gather a new coalition of warriors to battle the Burning Legion and put a halt to its horrific Burning Crusade. Armed only with courage and their unshakable faith in the Light, the Dranai look forward to finding the Alliance and ushering them towards the destiny that awaits beyond the skies of Azeroth. Now, the fate of two worlds rests in your hands. Hello everyone, Robert Rambles here and welcome to World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King Classic and the beginning of a Draenei Shaman leveling campaign. Thank you all for being here. If you're new to the channel, I play WoW a little bit differently than you might have seen in other places on the internet. And that is, I like to just relax and enjoy the experience and let myself get immersed into the world, into the stories, into the music and the ambience, and just really sink deeply into Azeroth and just have a chill time. Hope you are into that. To help facilitate that, uh, a couple of things I've done is I have what I call an immersion mode tab here. So we're not going to see any general scroll or trade or anything like that. The only things we're going to see here are going to be item loot, skill ups for professions, system messages, and any emotes or whispers or dialogue that NPCs have. And yeah, that'll help us avoid some distractions here. As you can see, I have moved my in-game UI around a little bit. This is not an add-on for the UI, but this here is an add-on, and this is called Immersion. This takes the standard text box that we usually get for quests over here, and it breaks it up into really manageable, bite-sized little segments that are easier to read and that flow a lot better than just reading it all in a block of text. And on that note, I do tend to read most of the quests, especially the main ones, just to help us stay in our immersion mode here. So let's get going. I'll talk about a few more things as we get moving here. Never mind my injuries, it's a miracle that any of us are alive. It didn't look like you'd, you'd pull through. You've been in suspension for weeks. Something happened and the exit are crashed. Many have died. But I'm relieved that you are alive. With you leading our efforts, I'm sure we'll get to safety soon. Pronitas asked me to send you to him when you awoke. He's waiting for you at the bottom of the hill. Alright. And yeah, for those of you guys who've been around the channel for a while now, I just couldn't stay away from the Shaman. Uh, I, I checked out a few of the changes that happened with Wrath of the Lich King. The biggest change in quality of life for me when I think about a Shaman is getting the button that lays down our entire loadout of totems all at once. Instead of having to have macros or key bindings for each individual totem, being able to throw down all four of our totems and retract all four of our totems is going to be really huge. And that, along with some of the other changes, I've been really excited once I remembered those changes to get back on a shaman and see that again. So here we are today. May the light embrace you. By my eternal soul, it is good to see you. I don't know why the exit are crashed. Only those of us that were in this part of the ship remain. There's not much time if we're to save everyone that we can. Be kind to those less. Our immediate concern is the depleted state of our healing crystals. We must replenish them quickly. Unfortunately, the only way to do this at this point is to extract the blood from the local Veil Moths. Their blood will make for a suitable substitute. The moths can be found any place around the Veil, but mostly concentrated in the northwest. Favor the road traveled by few. And also, we're going to be playing a Shaman in Dragonflight. I've been having a ton of fun on the Shaman in retail. Uh, I think it's a really special class. I think it uh, just feels amazing to play. We're playing Enhancement. And yeah, that got me even more excited to return to the Shaman in Classic. I kind of like that. I like when I'm playing a class in retail and I'm playing the same class in Classic. I like to see the differences and like just kind of look at things I like better, uh, things I like less, and I think it's a really fun comparison to have going on. 
I'm gonna turn the floating health bars on so that we can see the health of the enemies without having to look down here. And I did turn auto loot on, I thought. But apparently, maybe not. There we go. And so yeah, the only add-ons that we're using are Immersion and we're using Questy for quest tracking stuff. As far as our abilities go, we're starting off with Lightning Bolt. Cast a bolt of lightning at the target for 13 to 15 nature damage. It's a one and a half second cast time. We of course have our melee auto attack, which we might not need to use early on here if we're, our mana seems to be restoring pretty quickly. We also have Healing Wave, heals a friendly target for 34 to 44, one and a half second cast on that as well. I'm gonna move that down here for now. And then we have uh, Gift of the Naru, which is actually one of our racial abilities. This is a heal 50 over 15 seconds, so it's a heal over time. The amount healed is increased by your spell power or attack power, whichever is higher. And guys, do let me know about any of the volume settings, if anything needs to be adjusted. Again, I go for immersion, so the sound, ambient sound, and the music should be up. And I keep some of the battle sounds kind of turned down a little bit, because I feel like sometimes when you're watching something just to relax, a lot of the action sounds and the menu clicks and the grunts and groans can get, not distracting, but they can kind of break that relaxing state. At least I find it to be that way for myself, so I do tend to turn the combat sounds down a little bit. That being said, if they need to come up a little bit, they definitely can. So let me know about the uh, sounds. Right now you can see I keep them pretty low. We do have another quest that we should probably pick up over here. I like the female drain eye casting animation on Lightning Bolt. I think that's pretty cool. There's one quest done and level two. Let's grab this one over here. We need volatile mutations. Could have been doing these at the same time. The irradiated power cores from the Exodar have been wreaking havoc on the environment here. The most obvious effect has been the appearance of the strange creatures that seem to have sprung up near them. There may be something we can do to help them, but now the sheer numbers are becoming too much for us to handle. I'd like you to go out and call their numbers somewhat, and perhaps I'll have another idea after giving it some thought. Alright. Uh, we might as well just turn this one in, in case it chains into anything in the area. And we're going to visit our class trainer here, I think, as well. The Legion's end draws near. Regrettable that those creatures had to die so that we might live. Indiscriminate killing is not the drain I weigh. However, the blood you gathered will replenish our healing crystals, so their deaths will not be in vain. Grab the leather belt. Now that you've gathered all that we need to replenish our healing crystals, I need you to deliver the vials to Zeldun, our priest. Good health, Lord. All right, he's going to be right inside here. Each day is a blessing. Good work. This will do nicely to replenish our depleted healing crystals. But now that you're here, I think I have another use for you if you're willing. Rescue the survivors. The healing crystals are replenished, but that is not the only way we can help the injured. All drain I can tap the gift of the Naru to heal. You must use this ability to heal one of the crashed survivors. You'll find most of the survivors in areas to the west and northwest. Alright, let's go talk to our shaman trainer here. He has a quest for us right away. What you need, stranger. I am Furmanvar, and you are wise to seek me out. It is my calling to provide instruction to shaman, especially those who are just beginning to learn. Shamanism is only now being learned amongst the Draenei. You are brave to follow its path, and it is not popular amongst your kind. I will be here when you feel you are ready for further training. Alright. 
Not sure what the quest was exactly. Uh, let's train Rockbiter weapon. So long. Uh, I thought I had turned secondary bars on. I just think that what I did was I went in here and I made a bunch of changes and then didn't save any of it. There we go. So Rockbiter weapon is going to imbue the weapon, increasing its damage per second by two. That is a 30 minute buff. Uh, we might as well head out back here and also grab the quest out here. Uh, here they go. Let's see. Greetings, Spare friend. parts. We managed to recover a damaged holographic emitter from the crash. If we repair it, we'll have a chance to find other survivors outside of Abin Vale. There were devices from the ship that could be salvaged for spare parts in the area, but the local owl can carry them off before we can get to them. You must go to Nestlewood Thicket to find the spare parts. And inoculation. Zana needs our help to salvage parts from the Exodar. Terex prepared an inoculum that can be given to the Nestlewood Owlkin that live in the area of a lot of the salvage. Just get close to the unaffected ones and use the crystal on them. Unfortunately, you'll have to kill the others. You'll find the Owlkin at Nestlewood Thicket. Do not lose faith. Okay, we're not headed that way quite yet. I think we're going to go back out the front at here and grab the other quest. Then we'll work on the volatile mutations and find one of the survivors. Warm wishes to you, Dionys Aka. This is a breadcrumb back to the botanist. May the light embrace you. Blessings upon your family. Okay, yeah, we'd already grabbed her quest, so I guess that would have just been the breadcrumb that took us over to see her. Now we need to take care of these volatile mutations. I think with this character, since we're taking the warrior through uh, Blood, Mist, Blood Mist and Darkshore, I think it would be cool to take this character through the Eastern Kingdom stuff, like going into Red Ridge and Duskwood. I kind of like that stranger in a strange land kind of feel. And I think it kind of fits the vibe about how like there aren't a lot of Draenei Shaman at this point, so maybe our character would seek you know, other lands and just seek to see other things in the world. I think that's pretty cool. I kind of dig that on my warrior being in areas that like you, you don't necessarily think you would find a human adventuring on their own. One zone over in the Eastern Kingdoms I, I'd like to clear that I don't think we've ever really did a full clear of is the wetlands. I'd like to get a full clear of the wetlands. Let's see, we need to find a Draenei survivor. They should be... here's one over here. I 
I do want to be auto attacking a little bit because I, I want to keep my my weapon skill up. Obviously, right now that's not really too important. We only have maces. We're gonna need to find out where we're supposed to learn axes. Kind of worried that it's Iron Forge. Fortune. The nearby lake has been contaminated by one of the ship's power crystals. Many of the plants and animals of Amon Vale have been mutated because of this. I have a theory on how to heal the lake, but I must have samples from the mutated lashers for analysis. They can be found to the west in the Amon fields. Seek the path of the light. Okay, what do you have? Botanical legwork. The Amon fields to the west are the primary breeding ground for the local lasher population. With the corruption of the water table from the nearby lake, botanist Tracix is worried that the Lashers will not be able to repopulate themselves once we've cleansed the lake. Go to the almond fields and pick some of the corrupted flowers for me so that I might take a look at them and see what can be done. Favor the road, travel okay. So I think now we'll go in here and turn this one in. Then we're going to head out to the west before we head to the south. have not forgotten us. Be well. Grab the Corrupted Flowers, which used to be a little bit more of a challenge when these enemies here were aggressive back in Burning Crusade and prior.
I really like the casting animations. The uh, the melee swings are okay. The melee swings so far on the Draenei are better than they were on the female troll. We'll have to see what we're like with a two-hander. Although ultimately, ultimately as enhancement, we're gonna be we're gonna be dual wielding. So, two-handed animations, I guess, don't really matter that much. Probably have a two-hander on for a little while, and then revert uh, to two one-handers once we get dual spec or dual wield even. But yeah, I'm kind of I'm interested in elemental too. See, that's the thing with the shaman is that I'm very interested in all of its specs, and I have very little experience with any of its specs, uh, beyond like level 25, 28. These look like fine specimens. Thank you for performing the field work. Once I can find time to analyze these, I should be able to tell what it will take to restore the fields. Be kind to those less Arcanon Poros. I'll need all the samples in good condition. Okay, here they are. While you were out, I managed to gather some equipment together to make an analysis of the samples. This should only take a moment. Thank goodness, I think it'll work. I have an agent for you to spread at Silverline Lake to the south. It will neutralize the effects of the irradiated ship's power crystal that fell there. Swim out and scatter the neutralizing agent near it. Don't worry, you won't be exposed long enough to become irradiated. I wasn't worried until you said something about it, jeez. Uh, we didn't get level 4, let's fight a couple of things right here and let's get level 4 so we can train it before we head out. Isn't the music here just amazing? I really love the vibe of Azurmist. Inventory is full, yeah, not, not good. We hit level, so let's go sell everything and train. In that order, because if not, we're, we probably won't have the silver to train our abilities. Welcome. Browse at your leisure. Let's go ahead and equip the shield. Equip the gloves because we don't have any. Oh, we have a four slot bag we need to equip. That would be good. All right, that'll do. Good health. Long life. Looks like our shaman trainer does have a quest for us now. Akal Call of the earth, the time has come. You have grown to the point where you are ready to commune directly with the elemental spirits of this world. But be warned, I can sense that the manner of our entry into this world and its unfortunate side effects have angered the earth spirits and caused an imbalance in the elements. If you are to create your earth totem, you must first speak with the spirit of the veil. You will find it in the sacred grove nestled in the hills to the northwest. Peace for you. Okay, perfect. Let's train Earth Shock. Instantly shocks the target with concussive force, causing 17 to 19 nature damage and reducing melee attack speed by 10% for 8 seconds. Now, I, this used to be an interrupt in Burning Crusade. And it doesn't seem like it interrupts casting anymore. It reduces attack speed by 10% for 8 seconds. Huh. See you. That's interesting. Uh, we'll see how that goes. It's not an interrupt anymore. Yeah, let's prioritize doing the shaman quest so we can get our earth totem.
You are bold to seek my wisdom after what your people have done to these islands, stranger. Still, there is much to be said for your bravery, so I will impart to you some knowledge. The earth beneath your feet forms the foundation for all things. The sky, the waters, even great fire, all rest upon its shoulders. While those others often form chaotic tempests, the earth abides. It grants strength and fortitude to the core of your being. Now you will prove yourself, shaman. Call the balance of the elements. Oh, the balance of the elements has been disrupted by the violent intrusion of the Draenei to the Veil. Vale. The crash has caused the spirits of the earth to be enraged and turn upon each other, uh, the others who have come to quell them. You will learn that an understanding of the elements can only come when all are in harmony. Thus it falls to you to seek a balance. Behind me in the grove you will find restless spirits of earth warring upon the other three elements. Help restore the balance. By killing them, of course, obviously. So four restless earth spirits killed. It's a couple of big misses. Are we going to hit him at all? That's the question. Okay, so he's not bugged out. We literally just missed multiple times in a row. You have done well by thinning out the restless spirits. You have helped to heal the imbalance between the elements which your people inadvertently caused. Throughout your journey as a shaman, you must keep this in mind when calling upon our power. The balance must be preserved. I will now give you a piece of my physical being that you may create your earth totem from. Return it to the one who sent you here. You and I will be bound together for all time. Throughout your life, the forces of earth will be at your disposal. The balance will come... When your bones return to us at the end of your days, use your power wisely. All right. Go ahead and vendor. Oh, we have nothing to vendor. How pleasant is that? Yeah, the elementals weren't lootable, I guess. Live another day. Together, the broken and the drain eye will regain a deeper understanding of the mysteries that the elements hold. You've done well in helping to restore the balance of the elements at the grove. You have also created a balance between the earth element of this world and the drain eye. Perhaps this will help to bring understanding to those among us who do not approve of our ways. I will create for you a totem through which you will be able to call on the power of Earth to do your bidding. 
and with time, more of the mysteries of Earth will be revealed to you. All right, so we got our first totem. And this is where we're picking our loadout, okay. So is there gonna be a button for me to lay that down? I guess it's probably something that we get later on. So for now, we'll do this. I won't be dropping this every fight. We're not gonna worry about dropping the totem every single fight. Uh, once we have all of our totems and we have the button that drops all of them, then we're going to be dropping our totems every fight. But for the time being, uh, maybe if we pull multiple enemies, we'll drop it. We'll get uh, a, a totem that distracts enemies. Like, so if we pull two, it'll aggro one of them for us. And that'll be something that we throw down probably pretty often. Alright, so for now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to head over to, over to the lake and spread the purifying agent, or neutralizing agent. Now we need to find some spare parts and we need to inoculate some of the Owlkin over here. It's not going to work on the mutated ones. Only the ones that have not been mutated yet. Oh, these guys are not aggressive. Okay, these used to be aggressive, so you couldn't just walk through here and find them. You'd have to, like, clear your way. I'm still gonna fight some of these guys. I, the, my problem with making these guys all not aggressive is that you lose so much kill experience. And they probably adjusted like the quest experience to make up for it, but I still prefer fighting some of the guys that used to be elites. Or not elites, aggressive. <laughs> if they were elites, that'd be horrible. Fighting elites at level four. Alright, these are the spare parts. I don't know if I've ever gone up here.
All right, that's it for the emitter parts. Now we're just looking for a couple more owlkin. One more, actually. Let's fight a few more to get the level, and then we will hearth back. From what you described, the neutralizing agent worked. I just wish that I knew how long it will last. We really need to remove that power crystal from the lake entirely. I will tell Tidon to try the neutralizing agent on one of the captured beasts at once. Good health, long life. Go ahead and try the neutralizing agent on the mutated creature. Looks like it's time to let you out of this cage. Now to put the neutralizing agent on it. Nice, nice, success! It turned back into a cute little bunny. Please tell me it doesn't explode. We're gonna assume that's a happy ending. That they figured out how to restore the critters, and the critters are all gonna be fine. Blessings upon you. Let me take a look at those. Yes, I think these will do nicely. Good job. The emitter is rather complex, so it may take some time to finish the repairs. I'll let you know when it's ready. Uh, we'll take the leather pants. Seek the path of the light. We will equip those. Good fortune. With many of the Owlkin now inoculated, we can focus on getting out of here and not have to worry about wiping out the Owlkin population in the area. Oh, great. Let's do strength. The missing scout. We now have several separate confirmations of unusual activity up on the Shadow Ridge. This is disturbing. We thought that the scouting missions already undertaken had been thorough. One of my scouts hasn't reported back yet. Shaman, I need you to head southwest to the other side of Silverline Lake and find Talon and see what has delayed him. 
Remember the lessons. All right, we could do that. Let's pop our elixir here. Hey, Blood Elves, they ambushed me. Don't have long. You must eliminate the Blood Elf threat. Find out what they're up to. They're on the ridge behind me. Remain vigilant. Be cool if we could, like, heal you. <laughs> oh, even these guys are non-aggressive. That's right, everything is non-aggressive. I, I don't think I've leveled up a Drain Eye since Burning Crusade. I don't remember ever encountering these guys as non-aggressive enemies. We're gonna fight some of them, but I'm gonna go grab these plans first, I think. plans seem important, you should take them to Vindicator Aladar at the crash site. Okay. Now we can put down a totem and pick and choose our victims, I guess. Trying to see how we could burn ourselves out of mana, and it seems like, yeah, if we just want to cast Lightning Bolt and Shocks all day, we can definitely, definitely put ourselves out of mana. I do have a little bit of water we could drink if we need to. Or we could just be more mana conservative.
going to fight a few more of these guys. Again, I really dislike all these being non-aggressive because... Especially at this level, kill experience is so important. End draws near. I have a plan. We must kill their leader. Without their master, perhaps they will retreat to regroup. We just need to buy time until the repairs are completed. Then Vindicator Aldar must know of this. Kill the surveyor, then return and tell him what we found. May your days okay, be so yo, it's the same heart. lady that dropped the quest item for us that we have to go kill. She's probably respawned by now. We'll go ahead and fight till we're level 6 and then we'll run back.
The Naru have not forgotten us. I thank you for dealing with the Blood Elf Surveyor. She, surely she was their leader. Rest assured, we will deal with whatever rem remnant of them is still nearby. Take the main hand mace. Blessings upon oh. your family. Yeah, inventory's full. Let's you wish to buy. Take a look trade. at that. We need to equip this. Here, let me read those plans. The Blood Elves have followed us here. They are evil to the core and should be wiped from existence. Oh. I apologize, that was uncalled for. We are indebted to you for uncovering this information. While you were out investigating the Shadow Ridge, Zana here has been going on about the holographic emitter. You might want to speak with her. Dionys Aka. The Naru have not forgotten us. I got it. I think I managed to fix the emitter. Here, I'll just activate the last crystal and that should do it. Take a look at the emitter, it looks like it's beginning to work. Someone is appearing. Safe journey. By the seven Atamal crystals, others have survived the crash. Zana, is that you? It's so good to see you again. And who do we have here? No doubt communication possible I give you greetings from Azure watch so we're going to Azure watch you must go to Azure watch at once and speak with Duvin all right we will do that but we're gonna train our level six spells first so earthbind totem Summons an Earthbind Totem with 5 health. Slows the movement speed of enemies within 10 yards, so maybe if we have a runner that could be useful. And then Healing Wave rank 2. You'll come back sometime. And yeah, we can leave here now. We're going to head over to the west. We're headed to Azure Watch. There will be a couple of things that we could do along the way uh, that we'll go ahead and do. Couple things I want to track here. Do leather working and skinning.
May the light embrace Word from Azure Watch. Shaman, a couple of mutated beasts jumped me and my leg is injured. I was sent on a scouting mission from Azure Watch after we received word from Zana. Please, could you go speak with caregiver Shellen in my stead? She needs to know how many people to expect in Azure Watch. Remember the lessons All right, we can do that. And we will do her quest as well. She wants us to do a little bit of fishing for her. We will even learn fishing here. And then we're going to use our net to catch 10 red snappers over here in the water. Eventually we'll catch ourselves a murloc. It will happen. I think what I'm also noticing today is that after the, uh... After the maintenance today, there's no more ziggurats floating above the starting zones. Uh, they finally stopped the Wrath pre-patch event. <laughs> On the servers that, for some reason, some servers, the pre-patch events were still live in the starting cities. You could even do the quest. It was kind of strange. But it looks like with the maintenance this morning, they got, it, they got that straightened out. Maybe we're not going to run into any murlocs. I shouldn't say that, right? <laughs> That might be the first time I've ever done that entire quest where we did not get jumped by any hungry murlocs. Interesting. And she's actually going to give us a fishing pull and lure for free for that one. Uh, you did a wonderful job. Our people will be thankful for this bounty. With that said, would you mind taking this haul of red snappers to Acteon at as your watch? Sure. Could also do a little bit of uh, a little bit of fishing. I think all I'm going to do after this is uh, run us to Azure Watch, set the hearthstone there, and uh, park it for the day. I'm really happy to be back on a shaman. Uh, it's going to be a really good time. Definitely one of my favorite classes in the game as far as like my interest level in it. But also a class that uh, you know I haven't played to like any real high level. And the only spec I've really experimented with at all has been Enhancement, so I'm kind of looking forward to getting to know the ins and outs of the Shaman. Again, our, our Dragonflight character in Retail is going to be a Shaman, so I think it's going to be really interesting to see the two side by side. Obviously, you know, comparisons are kind of pointless, but to me it's kind of fun as someone who plays both games to kind of see how the classes differ. And yeah. But I, I'd love to hear from you guys. 
Let me know what you think of the shaman. I know this is like our, our third go at a shaman. But it's our, our first go at a shaman in Wrath of the Lich King. So having a button eventually that lays down our entire totem layout is going to be huge for me. Uh, it's just a really big quality of life thing that's going to make being on a shaman a lot more enjoyable. So yeah, I, I am really, really looking forward to it. Hope you guys are having fun with this one as well. Let me know what you think. I would love to hear from you guys. I think we'll go fishing and cooking on this character. We'll do leatherworking skinning for gear, and we'll do fishing and cooking. And just kind of really get into the character and give it all these professions that kind of flesh it out and help us get immersed in it and stuff like that. So that is the plan, guys. Thank you so much for being here. If you did enjoy the video and you want to see more classic content, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. That would really help me out a lot, and I would be super grateful. Thank you guys again. As always, take care of yourselves out there in the real world and take care of each other. And we will see you back here again in Azeroth sometime really soon. Bye for now.